Good evening. Fare dodging on the railways is on the rise. Rail unions claim that on some routes in the West Midlands, a fifth of passengers could be travelling without tickets. Rail operators insist the true figure is lower. It comes as London Midland, one of the worst performing in the country, is cutting the number of ticket inspectors and has increased some fares. Here's our transport correspondent, Peter Plisner. The daily commute, a costly experience. Caroline Hornberger pays more than £1,200 for her season ticket from Droitwich, but she's concerned that some of her fellow passengers might not be paying anything. There certainly is a lack of visibility of people checking tickets on trains and at stations. Um, and that way you're going to miss people, so you're going to miss revenue. And that's certainly happening. Rail unions claim the number of people travelling without tickets could be as high as 20% on some routes. And here's one of the reasons. At Birmingham's New Street Station, we found ticket desks unmanned, an open invitation for fare dodgers. And there's more. I've heard of one train guard who collected more than £500 in one day from passengers who would boarded his train without buying a ticket. Rail unions warn that it can only get worse. London Midland is reducing the number of ticket inspectors as part of a restructuring plan. Well, we think it's madness to get rid of so many uh, revenue protection staff on the back of uh, them closing booking offices. I mean, what's crucial for London Midland and for the railway in this area is for them to actually collect as much fares as possible. But London Midland maintains that even with fewer staff, it'll still be able to catch the fare dodgers. We've got different staff who can check tickets, different staff who can sell tickets, different staff who can issue penalty fares. If we can work more flexibly, we can actually cover more stations, more trains and more hours and give more benefits to our passengers than we've ever been able to before. And things do need to improve. Otherwise, according to rail experts, the amount of money being invested in the railways could fall. In the longer term, it could mean that decisions about investment are scaled down because all these journeys are not being recorded. And there's more bad news. According to passenger groups, satisfaction levels are still below where they should be. Satisfaction scores are at 73%, which really is not good enough. Passengers want punctual, reliable services, and we feel at the moment that these could be better. But despite that, London Midlands still increased fares on some routes yesterday with minimal publicity, something that has further angered passengers. Peter Plisner, BBC Midlands Today. Well, with us now is London Midlands Head of Communications and Board Member Francis Thomas. Good evening to you. Hello, Nick. Uh, can, can we just start with that point uh, that fares went up yesterday and quite a lot of passengers didn't sort of clock the fact? Well, the only fares that went up were the super discounted fares and they went up by about 50p to a pound, and we advertised those at the stations where it applied. The regular fares didn't change. But clearly, some passengers didn't see that, and they're going to resent it, aren't they? Well, nobody likes a fares increase. We don't like putting up our fares, but we tend to put up our fares at this time of year only on those very heavily discounted fares where we're seeing that maybe we're getting too many people on some trains. So if you travel down the, the route from, say, Stoke down to, to London, you will have seen just how busy some of those off-peak trains are, and maybe we're a little bit too cheap on those. Now, the, the unions are saying up to 20% of passengers are going on trains without paying for tickets. That's an astonishing figure. How well, can it happen? Well, it's an open system, and I, clearly we need to get better at checking fares, collecting fares, and that's why we're talking to our staff and our, our, our trade unions about working more flexibly, making changes so that we can cover more stations, more trains, more hours, and give better service to our customers. You can see how some customers will be very angry if they see others are getting away with it, and they're paying a lot of money. Totally agree with you, Nick. No, yeah, why should an honest, fair-paying passenger get ripped off by a cheat and a fair dodger? But you're cutting back on numbers, so uh, you know, on staff. So surely you're going to find it more difficult to watch out for people. Well, when we when we looked at this, what we found was we were terribly inflexible. So the number of people we've got, it's not about simply having more people. If we could get more revenue back by having more people, we'd do it. What we need to do is be more flexible so we can cover more stations, more hours. If you're a cheat and you know the system, you know when the, the gates aren't manned, you know when we don't check on trains, and, and you can work around that. And there are clearly some people who are. You know, we, we penalty fare something like 1,600 people every month at the moment. Well, well let's, let's go to some individual um, viewers who've got in touch with us. On Twitter, for instance, Ewart Johnson says, how can you justify an increase in fares when you're throwing so much money away with so few people checking tickets? We need to get better at checking tickets, making it harder for people to dodge fares, and that's what this reorganisation and the discussions we're having with the unions is all about. Also, and on Twitter, uh, Richard Hanscher says, why are you not installing barriers and oyster-style cars that they have in London? Yeah, 
barriers are expensive to, to put in place, so you put them where you've got a lot of people passing through because then it's, it's worth it your while. It's more efficient. But it's also about the economics of it, Nick. You wouldn't spend one pound in a penny to get a pound back in revenue. So you have to look at the cost of, of the control measures that you put in place. So New Street will have barriers when the, when the work's completed, but a small station that doesn't get many passengers, which is also open, you'd have to look at the whole structure of the building. You'd have to close that off. That would be very, very expensive. Yeah, we, we've sort of covered this already on Facebook. Mike Mir, why should we pay for a service with so many cancellations and delays, yet you're still cutting staff? Well, the good news for Mike is, of course, we've just had our best period for over 12 months, and on some routes, some of our best performance for nearly two years. We've been working really hard to improve our performance, and that's our main focus, because we know what our passengers expect from us is a reliable service, and that's what we focus on every day. Francis Thomas, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. And thanks to you for joining us here on Midlands Today this evening. Coming up later in the programme,